and I'm excited to hear how the Lord is going to speak through him today. So I want you to give a huge welcome to one we don't get to see very often, but we couldn't do it without him, Pastor Earl Fonts. Come on up. All right. Thanks, brother. All right. Appreciate those, those awesome words of encouragement. Good morning, everybody. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited I could drop kick a monkey. All right. All right. All right. How many of you are ready to have a terrible day? How many of you are ready for a terrible message? Well, you know, people will tell you all the time, have a good day, have a good day. Maybe you've had 87 and a half people tell you to have a good day, and you're not, and you're like, eh, I don't want a good day. Maybe, you know, sometimes people say, have a good day. I say, do I have to? <laughs> or I say, don't, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> well, before you run out of here screaming and get mad at Pastor Jim for having me preach, uh, let's open it with prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to bring a terrible message, but actually a terribly good message. Open our hearts and our ears to hear what you want to speak to each of us. I pray each individual will hear exactly what you want them to hear. We invite your Holy Spirit to be here with us in power, Lord. Please bless this word and, uh, and those who hear it. Awesome. Well, I want to back up a little bit. When I said, are you ready for a terrible day? What I really meant is, are you ready? Are you ready for a terrible day? Because we know that life's not easy. And, and I know many of you are having, a, things are going great, especially with the missionaries and stuff. Got, been, maybe went through some different things this last year, and, but God's got you, and, and you can look forward to what's going, what God's going to do next. But some of you, maybe things aren't going so good, or you're, you're fearful that something bad is about to happen. Well, God's there for you. He's going to be there with you. And, um, you know, when we talk about terrible times, we often, it's easy to talk about Job. What was Job's response when tragedy hit his family and even him physically? It was so bad that his wife even said, curse God and die. And he said, foolish woman, I'm not going to do that. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. I'm going to praise and serve God in the good times and the bad times. You know, with, when people get married, they say, for better or for worse. But oftentimes, we only want to serve Jesus when it's better. It should be the same way. We should serve Jesus and love him with all of our heart for better or for worse. So I want to, in just a moment, we're going to I'll play a video clip. Um, Rocky Balboa in, uh, I think, Rocky 38 or something like that. <laughs> he says, he says, uh, He's given some advice to his son, some life advice that was actually pretty good. Part of it, he says, uh, says it's not about how hard you hit, but about how hard you get hit and keep moving forward. You know? So we're going to play that real quick right there. <laughs> and while you're watching this, listen to what God wants to speak to you. Keep going. You ain't going to believe this. Well, you used to fit right here. I'd hold you up. They say to your mother, this kid's going to be the best kid in the world. This kid's going to be somebody better than anybody ever knew. And you grew up good and wonderful. It was great just watching you every day. It was like a privilege. Then the time come for you to be your own man and take on the world, and you did. But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. 
Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. I'm always going to love you no matter what. No matter what happens. Cowards, when they get hit once, they give up. I know that's not you guys. I want to give you my testimony. It's not as much of how I got saved and got going for Jesus, but I want to tell you today how what God does to keep me going for Jesus. See, when I was a kid, I, I lived in as, as dysfunctional family as you can think of. I had an alcoholic father that abused my mother. They would split up and get back together and split up and get back together. They got divorced and they got back together. And then when I was 13, my mother died. Now, what I want to tell you isn't to say, oh, feel sorry for me because I don't feel sorry for myself. All right? And it's also not to compare whatever tragedy or bad things happen in your life. But I, want to, I don't normally share this, but my mother didn't just die. She committed suicide. And that's tough for a 13-year-old. But even before I gave my heart to Jesus, God was there and got me through it. At 17, 1987, same year you started missions work, that's when I gave my heart to Jesus and I got going for Jesus. You know, and I had some great things happen. I got, went to Bible college, got married, had a family, you know, and, you know, there's just normal life things that happen and ups and downs and different things. But in 2015, my father died. Now, I'm the youngest of six kids. In 2017, one of my brothers died. 2019, one of my sisters died. Last year, my father-in-law, my wife's father, who I was really close to, who was also a pastor and a missionary, last year he passed away. And a month ago, another brother passed away. You know, life's full of its ups and downs, but I want to show you today how God got me through it. And I'm going to, just in a nutshell, two things. Number one, God's put godly people in my life to encourage me, pray for me. It's my wife who's doing kids' church right now. All right, this pastoral staff, friends that pray for me and care about me. And you guys, you know... One of the scriptures says when someone falls and he's got someone there to, to pick him up, you know, then, it, then um, it's better than when you're not alone. And I am not alone. Well, I want to, I have a little illustration here to show you this. The second thing that gets me through is the power of the Holy Spirit. Because that was a big deal when I gave my heart to Jesus. I was in a good church that was like, man, you need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. So, now how many of you ever heard of the, the statement, how, uh, is the glass half full or half empty? Now, if you look at the glass and you say, it's half full, then maybe you're a positive person. Or if it's half empty, maybe you're a negative person. But many people are actually unfulfilled. Maybe you have some disappointment or some things in your life that didn't go the way you wanted to. Maybe your career didn't work out. Maybe uh, you know, a marriage failed. Maybe there was you know, something that just unspeakable happened where maybe you even lost close family members and you feel like your, your life is empty. Before you come to Jesus, your life is empty. Now, some people will fill yucky stuff in there because there's that void. They turn, to, they turn to drugs or bad relationships. And the whole time, God cares. God doesn't want you living that way. Or maybe some days are good days, and some days are bad days. And you're just going in circles. And you're like, man, what's my life? Come, what's happened to my life? Maybe some people get so bad they look at their life they have they give up hope. 
and they just end their own life. And I know I've, I've been, I know what that's like. Now, what's a neat thing, even when I was a kid, when my mother did what she did, my family told me, don't rule, don't you do. Don't be, I'm like, I, I had no problem with that. I'm like, I just knew God had something for me and that there was something in life. And he does. No matter how bad life gets or where you're at, there's always something new in Jesus. The mercies of the Lord are new every morning. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, Jesus, when you ask Jesus into your heart, forgive you of your sins, just give your heart to him, he will fill you up. Like I said, behold, the old will pass away, and behold, all things will become new, and you will be filled to the top. But God's not going to stop there. When Jesus said, when you receive him, you have rivers of living water flow from your inmost being. God wants to fill you up to overflowing. And so if a little, something bad happens, like maybe I'm a little down because I've had some loss in my family, God's right there to fill me right back up. That's my testimony today is family, friends, other ministers and pastors praying for me, and God just keeps filling me up. Man, I'm telling you. And this picture might run out, but the Holy Spirit will not run out. I'm going to go ahead and go like clean this up. I don't want to spill in here. So let me put this away. So don't look at the inward stuff. A lot of that stuff happens is on this stuff that you internalize and is on the inside. And God can clean that out. So instead of living from a perspective of all the things going on around out in the world and how that affects you, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you begin to live inside out. It, and God can give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. I, it's an easy go-to. Like Job, I said, was a, that's an easy go-to to talk about how he responded to tragedy. The other one to me is if you're on a plane, if you have the Holy Spirit in you and you're on a plane and it's going down, other people that don't have Jesus, they know their life's about to be over. But you can still, even in, in the worst circumstances, you can have a peace that surpasses all understanding. And while other people are freaking out and they look at you and you're like, it's going to be okay. One way or the other, maybe I might survive the crash. If I don't, the plane goes down, I go up. So it does sound kind of easy. But sometimes people have old problems that aren't just solved quickly. Now, it's nice if somebody has a drug addiction and God can and he has just snap people and they're just instantly healed. Sometimes God takes some time and brings some people into your life that's going to help you with that. And there's a process. But sometimes we get monkeys on our back. <laughs> that can really be very annoying. Yuck, 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 yuck. Sometimes the monkey's there because of your own fault. Maybe you've given in to some temptation. We like to blame everything on the devil. Sometimes the devil's like, I didn't do that. <laughs> have fun. You, you dug that hole yourself. That, but you could have some demonic oppression. You know, There's different things that you can do that can invite the devil to get into your ear, and you start hearing him louder than Jesus. You can't hear the, the devil louder than the Holy Spirit. Now, being here listening to this message and listening to the word, you're going to shut the devil up. But you got, maybe you got this monkey on your back. No, I need, I need to get something else here real quick. So I'll be just this. I got to go over here for just a second. Don't perform the disappearing crowd act, okay? <laughs> okay. Oh, here's a quarter. I found a quarter back here. I'm going to donate that to kids ministry. All right. Hey, you guys still there? All right. One more second. All right. But pastor, I got this giant monkey on my back. You ever notice that other people's monkeys are little and your monkey is big? 
<laughs> so, man, you guys are fun. I'm having fun. Are you having fun? All right. However, I might be able to have more fun if I didn't have this monkey on my back. You know, monkey on your back might be an addiction. Could be regret. It could be, uh, you know, some type of a sin. A big one that people have hold on to their the monkey for is unforgiveness. Sometimes you you might need to forgive others. You might even need to forgive yourself. We could, I could go on about all kinds of trouble. Everybody in here, there's a hundred people in here. There's a hundred different monkeys possibly. You know, but there, you know, there's that one um, kid show, Frozen. It says, "Let it go, let it go, let it." Okay, stop. I'll stop. <laughs> but you know what? There's a lot of things you can just let go. Say, so, you know what? Today's a new day. The mercies of the Lord are new every morning. You know, and so you can. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's with this guy? Okay, I'm gonna go over here. Uh, to be honest, I mean, I'm not naive. Not all monkeys are that easy to let go. Some of them can stick around. You don't, maybe, you don't know how it got there. Maybe you do. There's all kinds of ways they get on you. But it's up to you to take the initiative to get rid of that monkey. What are you going to do? Are you going to just live with it and go, well, like a ball and chain? Ah, I'm just going to walk around. I'm going to learn to live with this. God doesn't want you to live like that. God wants to bless you with an abundant life, not being held back by anything. Not being held back maybe by what other people have said about you or what you've even said about yourself. The Bible says, as a, man, as a man think, it's so easy. If you are down on yourself, it's going to be harder for God to do what he wants to do in your life. God's got amazing plans for each one of us. And it doesn't matter what you know, mistakes you've made. God can get you back on track. The mer- like I said, the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Every day, there's a fresh chance. But like I said, it's not always that easy. But the biggest thing that you can do to get rid of that monkey is just kneel down and pray. And it doesn't have to be a fancy prayer. It could just be, God, Help! Talk to God just like you're a friend. If I've got a problem and I need prayer, I go to, I go to God first. And then sometimes God tells me which person, maybe another pastor, to go talk to and pray about. And then you can get that monkey out of your life. I'm getting... So, we got a little monkey over here we got to deal with. Don't let your little monkeys become big monkeys. You say, in the name of Jesus, monkey, get out of here. (laughs) I told you I was going to drop kick a monkey. (laughs) Hey, don't look at me like that was a little monkey. (laughs) Martha, did he just drop kick a monkey in church? You're not supposed to do that. (laughs) So... Now, some of you are like, oh, he's been paraphrasing lots of verses, and, and, but he hasn't actually read it out of the Bible. Well, I got you covered. We're actually going to read Psalm 91. The whole thing. It's actually only 16 verses. But there's some stuff in here that really applies to where uh, we're at today, the church, America, you know, the problem is we say, oh, the America is, and there's all these constitutional things and the government and the president. and You know, the problems we're facing isn't just America. It's worldwide. And we care about the world just like God does. That's why we send missionaries to Japan and other places around the world. Because God cares about the whole world. And to be honest, I mean, America, although we are one nation under God, Israel is the apple of God's eye. But it's awesome for us as a nation to be able to be used by God to spread the the good news. And I think that's a key part of the end times is what God can use America for to spread the good news. 
So yay for freedom, and, but more yay for being able to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus. So I'm going to read Psalm 91. Pastor Jimmy, could you come play something nice on the piano? Um, we're going to read this. I'll do a little closing thing, and then we're going to um, finish actually with a song. So I get my spectacles because now my nearsightedness isn't working so good. Okay. Psalm 91, verse 1. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. You know, I want to come to the, I come to the point where I do want to make the salvation message clear. You know, there's a verse in the Old Testament that says, The eyes of the Lord go to and fro to strengthen those whose hearts are fully His. Is your heart fully the Lord's? Maybe you've been on the fence. I don't know about this God stuff, this Bible stuff, this Jesus stuff. Well, Jesus loves you so much that He wants to save you from the worst terrible thing that could ever happen. And that's to be separated from God for eternity. God created you for a purpose. Not this, just so you can go out and have your own family, your career, and be successful. But He created you to have a relationship with Him. But sin is the biggest thing, the first thing that separates us from God. And Jesus paid for that sin with his own blood. See, our blood is imperfect. We're all, we all make mistakes. But Jesus never one, made one mistake, including you. You are not a mistake. You are not a mistake. It doesn't matter how bad you think, oh, I messed things up. There's no way to come back from that. Yes, there is. The old things pass away, and the old, on the, behold, all things become new. I keep getting this standing. The mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Today's a brand new day for you to get a fresh start. And when we're singing this song, I'm not going to do a normal altar call. At the end, we will be available. Some pastors will be up here to pray with you if you want some more questions or you want some prayer specifically. But during this next song, think that we're about to sing. Think about the words and think, where's my heart with Jesus? Do I need to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior? Well, I'd say, yeah, you do. Today is the day. Now is the time of salvation. That's right. You can make this day the day that you always remember. This is the day I fully gave my heart to Jesus. When I, the, the key part, when I gave my heart to Jesus uh, in 1987, was I said, Lord, I promise to live for you every day for the rest of my life. Now, I'm not perfect, but that's been my goal. And you can do that too. So Jesus, I need your help. There was a guy that came to Jesus and said, Jesus, I repent. Help me to repent. See, he wanted to repent, but he knew he 
couldn't do it on his own. He needed God's help. When people tell you to repent, stop that addiction or, or get this fixed in your life, God knows that we can use some help. And he will instill things in you. He will overflow you with his Holy Spirit. And your life's going to be amazing. Even though some things are up and down, you're going to know you're on track going forward for Jesus. And last thing I'll say is, God made time only to go forward. I point that way because you're looking that way. But God made time only to go forward. God didn't make time to go all over the place. You can't go back and change the past. But with God, you can have an amazing, terribly good future. So could you please stand with me as we sing this, uh, this song, and then I'll do a closing prayer. I'm standing on this mountaintop, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us. Kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory was your power in us. It's your power in us. Standing here, Lord. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us, kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, yes, our hearts can say. and struggles on the way but with joy our hearts can say never once did we ever walk alone not one time God carried by your constant grace held within your perfect peace come on declare never once no we never walked alone We are breathing in your grace. Evermore, we'll be breathing out your praise. You are faithful, God. You are, you are faithful. You are faithful, God. Yes, you are. God is faithful. God is faithful. All right. So we might be done a little bit early today, so you don't have to rush out. If anybody wants some specific prayer, we're going to be here for you. But I'm going to close this part in prayer, and then you can be dismissed. Dear Jesus, thank you that you are faithful, that you care about us, and that you're with us through the good times and through the bad times. 
through the highs and through the lows. And thank you that you can get us focused on looking forward and, and move and forget about the past and not let ha past hindrances and monkeys and different things that might just slow us down. We don't, that's gone in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, I pray you bless each person here. Give them a, a great week, a great month, and a great life. In Jesus' name, amen.